Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 245 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, the 29th of May, 2012. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Crystal Wells. Hey, peeps. It's been a while. How you been? Uh, I've, I've been good. Let's say good. Yeah? yeah? School been all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just actually She's started the new class. So, uh, the new class. So plan. far, it's good. But the last class, I'm almost done. It's, it's almost done? Like almost the whole thing that's keeping you away from us Tuesday yeah. nights yeah. is almost done? Okay. Except it's on Wednesdays now, so I'll it's come. It's on Wednesday. I'll come in more, I promise. All right. Sounds good. So, uh, what do you? What, what's the new class? What do you transition? Uh, it's into? called advanced web design. So. so you went from like rookie web design to advanced. I web went design? to HTML. Hmm? To pff, no problem. Cool. Awesome. I'm ready to learn some CSS, <laughs> some XML, some XHTML. Pretty if you much. throw that X at the beginning, it makes mm-hmm. it even more advanced. Yeah. And yeah. with that twang, that's how I went into yeah. it. I went into it with a twang. I came out of it with no twang. That's really weird. Right? Is that Usually the, when you go tech, away to the techie to thing like, happening? Is, maybe that's no what twang. it is. Once you get good at it, you just you know how to say XHTML without the twang. Without the twang. <laughs> yeah. Less counts. How have you been? Nice to see you. Hey, uh, tonight we've got those Eco Alkalines batteries to give away a full year supply. Stick around. We're going to be uh, giving those away in about 10 minutes' time. Also, we're going to be telling you about how you can win free long distance calling, free phone service for an entire year from us here at Category 5 TV. Cool. We're going to be learning all about that in just a little bit if you missed the announcement last week. And of course, the giveaway is going to be next week. So stick around. We got all the information for you. And tonight is very exciting. We're going to be, uh, well, Krista's here now that she is progressing into advanced <laughs> web design and and all that kind of stuff we're going to be looking at some pretty cool tools looking mm-hmm. we're kind of breaking into my online toolbox and some helpful resources that are available for you on the uh, world wide web to help you when you are developing a website so we're going to crack yeah. into that toolbox look at some of those uh, those helpful tools and i'm going to provide that toolbox for you so that you can refer back to it in future as well So if you're at all interested in web design, this is the episode for you. If not, then hopefully you like to win stuff. (laughs) Oh, who doesn't like to win stuff? Yeah, I I do. I like to win stuff. I do too. Winning stuff is cool. Jot, what do you think? Cool. Yes. Great to see everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, how about we uh, have a look at what's new and happening and, you know. Can you say that with twang? No, no. I could, but I'm scared it might come out like, like Irish or something. Yeah, anytime, I anytime I, I do the the twang, it's like I got to be careful that I don't offend. It's got to mm. sound fake, otherwise, exactly. you know, somebody out there actually speaks just I like know. that, and and they're, and they're hey, like, what's hey, he, what's he saying? What's he it's talking rude. about? Yeah, I'm so rude. Viewers. Sorry, mm. sorry about that. So, non-twang <laughs> version of what's coming up in the news. Let's have a look. Thanks, Krista. <laughs> Let's see, coming up in the newsroom, a set-top HD DVR that skips commercials is sparking some lawsuits from cable TV companies. Whoa. I know, I'm excited. The free flow of information in Google search results are being influenced by Microsoft. New laws in the UK restrict what websites are allowed to store in cookies. Mm DNA-based rewritable storage is being developed in the US. And Kodak's efforts to enforce one of its patents has failed. Uh Uh-oh. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. All I heard was cookies. I know. I heard that, too. I was thinking chocolate chip. Bring them on. Rainbow sprinkles. Excellent stuff. I can't wait. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. Uh, Sorry to do that to you. That's okay. Have a drink of water. I guess. That's quenching. Water break. (laughs) only water was a sponsor we'll we'll work we're working on that yeah (laughs) (laughs) we have to come on the set drenched every episode but it it gets their point across (laughs) and it, it works you know Hey, uh, we would love to receive your questions. Email us live at category5.tv. Chris has been away so long. Like, you, you, Do you remember like our website address and everything to tell it out? And, oh, 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 website. 
This is what show is this? This is uh, this is the the good one that happens on Tuesday nights that you keep missing. Right. Because you've been at school. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh I school. remember. I remember. No problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got Category five dot <laughs> TV. Get onto our website, and uh, we've got our chat room there. Love to have you join us there. We've got the community forum, uh, and all these things are available for you twenty four seven. So even if you're catching this after the fact, uh, you'll be able to check out uh, those features on our website. People hang out in the chat room all throughout the week, and uh, I try to pop in every now and then myself as well. And a new feature uh, that is available through our chat room, and it's coming on the new website that's launching on July 1st, but available to you now, is photobooth.category5.tv. Have you checked that out cool. yet? Cool. Um, I had a look at it, and I was like... I'm in sweats, and I just, I get, no. <laughs> <laughs> Head on over to photobooth.category5.tv. If he's not got his hands full of M&Ms right now, Garby's going to type that in for you and uh, post that into the chat room uh, right there at category5.tv. Basically what it is is it allows you to use your webcam to be a part of uh, an ongoing kind of time capsule mm-hmm. of little tiny thumbnail photos of viewers as they're watching the show. So That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and we submit some uh, from here at the studio as well. And uh, so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Going to be a part of our new site launch, which I'm very excited about. We were looking at mm-hmm. just before the show. Yeah, it looks really great. Really great, folks. You heard it right here mm-hmm. from Crystal Wells, no less. Mm-hmm. It's a good source, apparently. Yeah, she's trustworthy. I guess. When it comes to great <laughs> designs. <laughs> looks good. Be excited. <laughs> Crystal, we've got to take a quick break. We're going to be right back after this, and we've got those batteries to give away, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV, and as promised, we have a year supply of Eco Alkalines <laughs> batteries to give away. We've got the draw going right now, mm-hmm. and it is time to find out who our winner is. Mm-hmm. Cycling through well over 200 entries, uh, ballots, uh, people who have followed them on, uh, on Facebook, followed them on Twitter, liked mm-hmm. them on Facebook. I always get those ones I backwards. Know. That's what you got to do. Head on over to cat5.tv slash eco and go to the very bottom of the page. Like them on Facebook. Follow them on mm-hmm. Twitter. And uh, you will definitely be eligible for the next contest as well. But tonight. Fantastic. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner tonight of a year supply of eco Alkaline batteries is Bill Hogarty. Oh, yay. Bill we're going to get in touch with you. Eco Alkalines is going to get in touch mm-hmm. with you uh, through Facebook. And uh, congratulations. You are uh, going to be receiving a year supply of these batteries. Uh, Eco Alkalines, of course, are environmentally friendly. They're carbon neutral, uh, landfill safe batteries. Mm-hmm. Which is great. Yeah. I know I have a little bag at home of batteries, like, and you can't throw Just them away to, and you forget yeah, to take you them somewhere. Yeah, you want to recycle them, right? But I suppose you still want to recycle them, but it's great to know that I still uh, they're do. safe. I still recycle these, uh, but the fact is, is mm-hmm. that they they do end up, you know, batteries end up in the landfill. Mm-hmm. It just happens, and and they they will typically leak chemicals yeah. into the earth. And these batteries will not do that. If they do end up in a the landfill, there's nothing in here like mercury, cadmium, mm-hmm. lead, anything like that that is unsafe for the environment. It will biodegrade. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're also manufactured okay. with 98% recycled materials. So you know, we, we love to find products like this that are doing their mm-hmm. part for the environment. And Bill Hogarty, congratulations again on your year supply of Eco Alkalines batteries. Please find out more about them on their mm-hmm. website, cat5.tv slash eco, the official battery of Category 5 Technology TV. Cool. Well, we've awesome. got... Yeah. Awesome. So pleased. We've got uh, a ton of your viewer questions we're going to hop right into. Do. Yeah. All right. Oh, Love your questions. First question coming in here. I should just say, if you, if you wonder how to get your questions in, I don't mean to interrupt. You did. I, I just kind of, I, I was all I ready did. for it. I was excited. Yeah. I, was like, ah, I, I should have ah. waited until she was halfway through the sentence. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 please. No, please. start. No, I want to interrupt you. No, no, please. 
please. Okay. By all means. Email us live at <laughs> category5.tv. You can get onto our website as well. Uh, great way to, to get your question into us is through our website. Click on interact and uh, you'll see ask a question. Reason for that is because that way it comes into us not from your email account. It comes in through a protected mast kind of thing. So it helps to protect your, uh, your privacy as opposed to mm -hmm. just sending us an email because sending us an email, of course, it could happen. We try very, very hard not to let it happen. But if we have it up on the screen, for example, it may show your, uh, your email address. So using the mm -hmm. form on our website, category5.tv, uh, that's the best way to do it. Click on Ask a Question. Am I okay now? Yeah. Oh, also. <laughs> hmm. First question here. Um, She's going to start. It's going to be a good me. one. Yeah. It's from Louie. Hey, Louie. Whoa. That was awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. Sorry continuing about that. on. <laughs> it's not only like I haven't been away from the show for a while. It's like Robbie hasn't been on the show it's, for a while. It's like I didn't, I didn't even know that the CGI was turned on. You know, yeah. that's the transition effects. Hmm. We, can, we can do that, folks. But hmm. we didn't intend to. You really don't want to hear this question. <laughs> I'd I love to hear Louie's question. Come on. Okay. Louie, come on. I Why does she keep stalling your question, dude? Why? I hardly think this is my fault. I'm going to jump right into it. All right, yeah, you go ahead. So, from Louis. Thank he you. says, hey, Louis. Hi, Robbie. Hey. Hmm. I have Ubuntu 10.04 desktop PC running as a basic server. Okay. Here's the problem. I can't seem to access any services on it. Apache FTP 04. No example yep. from the network i don't have any firewalls turned on and i'm using a regular five port gigabit switch which is then connected to linksys router hmm. i do a ping test and here are the results okay uh, so you're getting replies i see yes. on the screen here okay let's see Anything else? i was told oh i just had to go after the garble <laughs> okay i was told the garble <laughs> the ping replies it was garble. I was told by a friend um that a linux machine should get a ttl of 64 okay by the way i also or i can also surf the web on the server without any problems i'm open to any oh. suggestions or ideas you have i enjoy watching your show and keep up the good work hmm okay can you see so the is, <laughs> my first question would be, based on what is being said here, is it a physical server hmm. with the native operating system, or is it a virtual machine? If it's a virtual machine, then it's it's a whole different ball game. If it's under VirtualBox, for example, you'd want to make sure that your your network adapter is set to bridged mode and that you have it set to allow all, uh, as opposed to NAT, hmm. which is like a, a it will have its own firewalled kind of network that okay. you can get out but you can't get in so if it's a virtual machine you want to double check on that kind of stuff let us know kind of the full details there because i'd love to be able to you know it's a whole different ball game if it's a virtual machine otherwise okay you're able to get out but they can't get in no ufw running uh the the firewall in in linux uh on ubuntu no uh no firewall that you know of so what could it be ip address um, something wrong with the host name, check your IP address, go to your terminal. So accessories, applications, accessories, terminal. And once you're there, just type in IF config. And your Ethernet adapter, ETH0 in my case, I'm assuming that you're using hardwired, not, uh, not um, wireless. Otherwise, it's going to be like WLAN or something like that. Okay, so my address here is 10.0.0.70. You want to check what your INET ADDR or address is. Make sure that it's on the same network. Like, let's say that was coming up at 192.168. something. something. Meanwhile, my internal network is actually a 10.0 uh, block. So, in that case, I wouldn't be able to access it from other computers because it's on the wrong block. So just make sure, you know, basic networking and make sure that your IP address is correct. Try accessing it in a, in a couple of different ways um, using the host name which uh, in Linux you would get by actually typing, I believe the word host name. Yep. So my computer is called demo. So if I wanted to access it on the network it would be on a Windows system I would go slash slash demo. On a Linux system I would go smb colon slash so if i go up here hit control l smb colon slash slash demo or if that doesn't work because say my dns isn't working or the name server 10.0.0.70 that would be this computer okay so just check on the way that you're connecting but you're saying that you also don't get apache 
that's odd because that's going to be port 80 and uh mm-hmm. I'm I'm really curious if it's a virtual machine or a physical machine, but I would double check that IP address. That's probably going to be what it boils down to. If it's a physical machine, mm-hmm. make sure it's on the same network. Can you let us know, Louis? I'd I'd like to know more information if if I haven't gotten you there, um, because it there's there's mm-hmm. so many variables when it comes to networking. The fact that you don't have a firewall tells me that it's probably a networking issue or a virtual machine network uh, adapter type issue. So let us know. Okay, Louie? Thanks for the question. Well, we just I happen to helps. have another question here. Another question? Mm-hmm. I know. I think I did. There. Okay. <laughs> this question is from Ronald. Hey, Ronald. Uh, hi, Robbie. Thank you for answering my question on the last show about adding a second hard drive. I googled sure. UIDD and found how to use it on in my FSTAB. Okay, F-stab yeah. That file? should be a UUID uh, oh. in his FS ta- uh, tab file. Okay, yeah. I got to know. You, you know well, well, it says UI, so that one wasn't my fault. That threw you. I know. UUID is like the, the unique identifier of your hard drive okay. peripheral. Kind of like the equivalent of like a Mac address for like a network adapter. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. She did, she gets stuff <laughs> when it has the word Mac in the name. Just put an apple in front of it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, instead of using ASB1 for the drive ID. Sure. Excellent. That's good. That's good. I was good. able to add the second drive that way. Good. Very good. And I, I'm sure that you understand why that's important with regard to, you know, if you change drive orders or add another hard drive, all of a sudden SDA1 is now SDB1 and everything, all your mount points are gone. So using the UUID avoids that kind of a, a situation. So very good. Glad you got that figured. Good. Oh, I was able to move my download folder to my second drive using the commands you showed. Excellent. But, but. big but, uh, I was unable I to like move. big but. <laughs> You're just, you're just not serious I tonight. Do, I had to do it. She just said big butt. And just, <laughs> just, oh, boy. Oh, Robbie. Uh. Anyways, <laughs> I was unable to move the VirtualBox MVs folder in the same manner. Oh. It said VirtualBox MVs, no such file or directory. So I edited uh. the hidden file dot VirtualBox slash VirtualBox dot XML instead. Okay. I changed the default path. Do you want me to stop there? You just sounded no, but I, I think I'm following. Um, okay. Was trying to create a sim link on an on an, a different hard drive to move his VirtualBox virtual machines over mm-hmm. to, so that they're on a separate hard drive. Okay. Didn't work, so instead edited the XML file and pointed it there. I see. So. Okay. A bit of a hack around. I'll almost guarantee you what I didn't cover was how to create sim links with a space in the name. I'll bet you that's what I didn't do. He's holding out on you. <laughs> holding out. Well, would you like me to finish the, the question? Sure. Just in yeah, case. And, well, Just in and case. I'll prep myself okay. here while you're, while you're doing that. Okay. So I changed the default path for the directories to the new directory slash uh, mount SDB1 virtualbox yeah. MVs. Uh, I have oh. to reinstall oh, the I guest. I see exactly what's happened. Yes. Okay. But I copied over the drive image file and reused them during the new install. So it is not as bad as it sounds. I hope I explained this right. And you did because did you see the light bulb go on over Robbie's head? Just a light glare, maybe. Okay, I'm just going to prepare fine. myself here for this. <laughs> I'm creating an STB1 mount point, and uh, we're going to call this one, okay, virtual box MVs is what he's called it. Mm-hmm. I think you probably meant VMs, virtual machines. But just because of the sake of the question, I'm going to I'm going to use exactly as he's written in the email. So, as per the email, now I've got slash mnt slash sdb1, and if I do an ls, I've got this folder called virtualbox mvs. I should probably, I'm going to close the uh, stuff that's happening in the background here just so it's not so distracting on the screen. There we go. Okay, so if I want to create a sim link for that, it's going to work a little bit differently. ln s, and Let's see here, mnt slash sdb1 slash, watch this, virtualbox, now hit tab. I just typed vir, tab. <gasps> Notice what it did is it created a, a slash here because you have to have an escape character before a space. So if you were typing this like this, okay, slash home, slash demo, slash 
VM. It'll say, oh, uh, is that the same error that he was getting? Uh, no such file or directory. Is not a directory. Yeah. Okay, pretty close as far as the errors go. I think that's probably what's happening to you. Uh, I may have my command backwards, as a matter of fact. I think it should be target. Sorry. Here we go. Okay, let's try that one, see if I can... Yes, sorry. That was my mistake. What I did there, folks, is I, I had reversed the hmm. target and uh, and destination. So, so what I have done there is to test that ln-s that's where I want my new sim link, and here's what I've typed, okay? So that's probably what you've typed, and then I get the no such file or directory. However, watch what happens if I now add a slash just before that space, okay? Now if I hit enter, it's done. No error, because what I've done is I've escaped that illegal character, okay? Alternatively, the other way that you can do this is you can go ln-s if you want to type it out in full form and just put this part in quotes because it has a space. Okay, so that's the other way that you can do it. Okay, and that's going to do the same thing. Two different ways to work with uh, <laughs> file names, folder names, symlink names, things like that, that have a space in the name under Linux. Uh, a little bit different than you're used to, uh, but I guess Windows will be pretty mm -hmm. much, well, they use the like Prograh tilde one for program files and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So things are a little bit different there as well. Um, so uh, tab is your friend. You type the first couple of characters of a directory name and it automatically fills it in as soon as you hit tab, just like I was showing you there, and it automatically escapes the spaces and things like that. So give that a try, my friend. I hope that that works real well for you. Um, sounds like you did hack around it, uh, so you found a way around your issue, mm -hmm. but um, hopefully that'll help some other people or yourself in the future. So cheers. Thank you for the question. Good. Oh, here's another question from, All right. I don't know from, from Dynamo. Dan. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dan. Okay. Uh, it says, you mentioned Shoutcast as a way to listen to radio on Ubuntu, but I can't find it in my repositories. I used, uh -huh. here's a line he used. Apt cache search shout. Uh-huh. But came up empty. Could you explain how to get Shoutcast running? I'm using Xubuntu 11.04 64-bit. Mm-hmm. Krista, are you familiar with Shoutcast at all? No. Do you listen to music? Oh, I, yes. What kind of music do you like? Uh, country music. Country music. <laughs> and oldies. I love oldies. Would you be pleased to, to hear that I've been listening to country music lately? <gasps> no. It's really gross. And, yeah, Are I you know, I'm sure? Saying, no, well, I've been watching The Voice, and I love... I mean, Blake Shelton is just... He's, he's great. such an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. And hearing his music and his new single and stuff, and it's like everything's really catchy, and I kind of feel like I know him a little bit because he's, mm -hmm. he's such a down-to-earth guy on the show. And so, you know, there's, there's mm -hmm. just it's that kind of connection. You in. It's kind of drawing... That's what happens. Uh, allowing me to appreciate the artistry a little bit more. So Oh, yay. I know. It's so dirty and <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> That's but where anyway. the twain came from earlier. That's where it came from, folks. Yeah. There you have it. Yeehaw! It's growing up so quickly. I know, but anyway, <laughs> I thought I'd mention that. So you love country music, and yes. there's not a lot of local country stations to listen to. There's, there's like Kicks 106. Two. Yeah, yeah, uh, down in Aurelia. What else have you got here? Uh, 899, which is actually just a radio station from it's like 96 something from Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like a repeater or something like that. Yeah. Um, so the neat thing about the world today is that you can actually pick up internet radio from anywhere Hello, in the world, yes. right? You can get radio through your interne internet connection. I quite often listen to a station called Live Ireland, which is uh, mm. broadcasting live from Dublin. And cool. it's it's very genuine, authentic Celtic music. And, and so I love that. And when we're tuning into mm -hmm. country music or whatever genre you want, <laughs> your eyes you can sparkle get it. when you say country music. Just they like don't. They kind of like go like this. No, they, they sparkle. Like uh, you're, you're thinking in your head like tee. -hee. I don't want people to lose respect for me, though. So country I got to. Uh, country. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Shoutcast is. The kind of back-end development mm -hmm. of a company that developed a, a 
age-old software called Winamp, okay. which most people have heard of. It's yeah. a, a fantastic player, but the the developers who created it also created this Shoutcast, which is a, an online delivery system for uh, radio. Oh, okay. And it was, you know, at the forefront of, you know, MP3 technology, it was, hmm. it became this massive, huge database of online radio. And they're not just terrestrial stations, like, you know, like Kix 106 or whatever mm-hmm. down in Aurelia. It's not just those. Mm-hmm. It's also wannabe broadcasters or oh, okay. stations that can't afford to set up a tower and pay the huge bills to have a, you know, a, mm-hmm. a, an STL going across to cool. a tower. And they can broadcast in much the same way that we're broadcasting here from a studio right. in my house. Mm-hmm. They can broadcast from a studio in their house music and, and mm-hmm. audio. So Shoutcast became and is this huge network of radio stations. So when you're asking uh, Dan about how do you install Shoutcast, Shoutcast is actually a service. It's not a piece of software. It's agnostic of what software you're using, and that's why when we demonstrated it on this set-top box where we were listening to some music there, uh, we said that it also can be listened to on Ubuntu because it's it doesn't care. It could be Windows. It could be Mac. It could be Linux. It could be anything because it's a service. So, Krista, I'll show you how to do this, and Dan, you, you watch this as well. I'm just going to bring up my web browser and go to shoutcast.com. All right? Right here, this is the the service. This is the service itself. So first thing I want to do is I want to point to help. Honestly, this is the first thing you want to do. Help settings, especially if you're on Linux, okay? And Windows users too, pay attention because you probably don't have a Shoutcast compatible player out of the box. You need to download and install WinApp or something like that, okay? Yeah. Or you can use their web player, but I prefer to do this this way. So I've gone into my settings there. I'm on Linux. Here's what I want to select. Play Shoutcast stations in my default media player. For example, Winamp, iTunes, Windows Media Player. Okay? So I've selected that. Scroll down a little ways. Tell it you want broadband or LAN version. That's going to be the highest quality. All right? Save settings. Done. Down the left-hand side, choose your genre. Say you want country. Okay? Over here. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of radio stations. All broadcasting with high bit rates. Okay, 128 bits, uh, kilobits per second. Basically, to the untrained ear, that's CD quality. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of difference between that and CD quality. 192 to 256 kilohertz uh, kilobits per second is like identical as far as what your human ear can hear. 128 is very, very close to CD. So here's a station that is broadcasting from who knows where. Click on play. It's going to download that file, and now I'm going to open it, okay, and go open with uh, movie player. And you can set up these, these preferences. I'm not going to break down and call you up. There you go. Lord cries out for you. And tomorrow you so. Won't so that just loaded that PLS file, so you need to have a PLS compatible player. Okay, which Totem is, mm-hmm. which is included in my Linux system. So you can actually set it up so that your browser is going to always open files of that type. So, for example, here I am in Chrome. Click on there and go always open files of this type on the PLS file. Okay, so now if I find the station, I hit play. And now Chrome is a little bit weird, but so I had to double click on it. But essentially, there you go. So you've got that station, you're able to listen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know Firefox, at least, if you tell it to always open it, it doesn't just open the folder, it opens the, mm-hmm. the PLS file into the player. So uh, once you've established what your favorite stations are, they're web links, so you can just create bookmarks. And then uh, you, can, you can easily listen to your favorite stations. So I actually have, a, in my bookmark toolbar, I've got one called Radio, and I've just dragged some of those Shoutcast links up to that toolbar. You just grab that play button and add it as a bookmark. Oh, so then you can just click on it. It's super yeah, easy. Exactly. Anytime cool. you want to listen to kicking country music. And who doesn't? Who doesn't? Yeehaw! <laughs> cool. That's Showcast, my friend. I it was and it's available fun. on any, uh, any platform at all. I listen to it uh, even on my iPod. There's a Showcast app, which is great. I mean, headphones. Cool. I've, I've only got an 8 gig iPod mm-hmm. and uh, iPod Touch. And I listen with my headphones to Shoutcast all the time because 
it's radio from all over the world. Any genre that you feel like. Oh, I'm sick of country for some reason today. No, no. For some reason, I want to listen to hip hop or oh. R&B, right? All of a sudden, you can just flip over to, you click on hip hop, R&B, bluegrass. <laughs> that one was for you. Thanks. <laughs> Showcast.com, the place to go. Mm-hmm. Enjoy. Dan did also ask, actually, um, does Eric play any Buddy Guy tunes? So if Eric is watching, you should play some Buddy Guy tunes. Buddy Guy. Hey, Buddy Guy. That sounds like what you call a guy if you don't know his name. Hey, Buddy Guy. Hey, Buddy Guy. <laughs> hey. So I forgot you're... your name, but uh, I don't want to be rude and just say, hey, you. So, hey, Buddy Guy. This is probably like a real guy. Italian all of a sudden? Is that... That's what that sounds like. Sound like you're... <laughs> now I've offended the Italians. I'm so sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> have to control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that was just oh. that was just some country guy. Oh, yeah. that was country. Yeah. Well, would you what rather? Country? Hey, buddy guy, buddy guy, <laughs> come over here. Let me buy you beer. Oh, let's see. Oh, I Krista. think we should just you know find yeah. out what's going on in the news. And Sounds like a plan. Oh, I'll leave Robbie and his <laughs> sorrows. And, yeah. Okay. So. And I'll write a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, on to better and awesomer, because that's word things. So, top stories in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Mm-hmm. A legal row has erupted in the U.S. over a set top box that lets viewers skip over adverts in recorded TV shows. Three U.S. TV broadcasters, Fox, NBC, and CBS, have sued the maker of the device, Dish Network, in a bid to ensure viewers see ads. Dish Network has filed a separate lawsuit which asks the court to declare that ad skipping can go ahead. The network fears that if viewers choose not to see ads, their main source of revenue will dry up. Hmm. Hmm. Why do they charge like 80 bucks a month for basic cable? I don't if know. If they need these ads so badly. I don't know. I don't understand that. And I think no ads on TV because there's like a million. It's yeah. awesome. But yeah, it's... Hmm me so yeah. anyways hmm. we, uh, the ads here at category five though don't don't delete those no they're good because they're good. it's like one or two we right? it's not unlike like the cable companies we don't charge you to watch and it's also not like watch. your commercial time is the same as your tv viewing time like you hmm. know that's ridiculous ridiculous mm-hmm. anyways continuing on hmm. Google shared some statistics as part of its efforts to be more transparent about what influences search results. And it shows that Microsoft has asked Google to remove more than 500,000 links from its index just in the last month. Oh what? My goodness. The vast majority of the links in question were ones which took people to sites connected to pirated Microsoft software. Microsoft's oh. requests dwarf those of the British Phonographic Institute, which represents record labels. It asked for 160,000 links to be removed again because they gave people access to pirated content. In a blog post explaining its decision to share the figures, Google said it had revealed the figures because it believed there should be transparency when something gets in the way of free flow of information. That Hmm. sounds a little fishy to me. Yeah. Like Google knows something that they're not allowed to say if it's affecting the free flow of information. I can understand if it's pirated. You know, if people are distributing yeah, illegal copies of but, Microsoft Word, then sure. I mean, shut them down. Mm-hmm. But obviously, if it's the free flow of information, it's Microsoft right. is using, abusing hmm. some power and some clout. We're on Strange. to you. <laughs> We're on to you. <laughs> oh, thousands of UK websites are expected to be in breach of a law that dictates what they can log about visitors. European laws that define what detail sites can record in cookies came into force on Saturday. Cookies are widely used to customize what repeat visitors see on a site and by advertisers to track users online. The Information Commissioner's Office said it would offer help to non-compliant sites rather than take legal action against them. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I like cookies. Uh, this guy likes cookies. <laughs> He does like cookies. <laughs> okay, researchers in the U.S. <laughs> have demonstrated a means to use short sections of DNA as rewritable data bits in living cells. The technique used two proteins adapted from viruses to flip the DNA bits. Though it is at an early stage, the advance could help pave the way for computing and memory storage within biological systems. 
The team from Stanford University's bioengineering department has been trying for three years to fine-tune the biological recipe they use to change the bit's value. After some 750 trials, the team struck on the right recipe of proteins and now have their sights set on creating a full bite, eight bits, of DNA information that can be manipulated using parts of a virus. Ooh. Hmm. The senior author of the research paper, Drew Endy, said one of the coolest places for computing is within biological systems. And and that they plan to create scalable and reliable biological bits as soon as possible. That's crazy. That's kind of interesting. It's interesting, but hmm. my first thought was, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And then I start thinking, oh, what's to stop somebody from, you know, putting something in your salad that carries right. information with it? Right. It's like a new age way of hacking, transferring hacking illegal data or. or information yeah. or something across the border or whatever i mean hmm. scary so the moral of the story is if you take a salad cover it and yeah. then you're good just you bring your own dressing <laughs> if it tastes a little off if the if the nanos seem to be flipping then you know mm-hmm. and if it says we are borg then definitely don't eat it and this is the kind of information that you can always rely on getting from category five it's very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Kodak's efforts to enforce a digital image patent has been dealt a blow by the U.S. International Trade Commission. Kodak filed for bankruptcy protection in January and is seeking to sell many of its patents to secure its future. A preliminary ruling by the body recommended that a claim against Apple and BlackBerry maker RIM should be ruled invalid because of the innovation's obviousness. Mm-hmm. The patent submitted in 1997 relates to a way of creating image previews. The firm said it planned to appeal against the ruling, but its share price fell more than 25% after the announcement. Hmm. Oh. Well, you can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv's newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributors from our wonderful community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I am Krista Wells. Krista Wells, thank you. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. And tonight we are brought to you by GardengateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice, visit their website at GardengateFarms.com. Also, we're brought to you in part by Cordery Electric, the official electrical company of Category 5 Technology TV. CorderyElectric.com. And thanks to them, we weren't nervous about the thunderstorm that is around us tonight. There's a thunderstorm tonight? That's what they said. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know, because we're here. Cordery's got our electrical all worked out. Not Mm. even a flicker. Not even. Nope. That's good. Hmm. Reliable. Now, just before I move on, do we have... I don't I don't necessarily know that we have the time, but do we Mm -hmm. have more questions? I think there are a couple floating around. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. First of all, folks, I promised it at the beginning of the show, we want to give you free phone service for a year. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, go to cat5.tv slash magicjack. And when you're there, you're going to learn all about this product. Uh, I encourage you to give it a try. There is a 30-day free trial right there. Uh, you can actually get uh, yourself free phone service and uh, and it will set you all up you get 30 days to try it you can send it back if you're not happy and you no harm done um, but that said starting next week we are going to be giving away a couple of these devices as well and they're going to include a full year service and these are the magic jack device uh, the magic jack plus which we reviewed recently mm-hmm. on the show uh, hillary and i had a look at the the device and they're fantastic you got to check mm-hmm. this thing out i did i actually looked and yeah. i can't believe it works i know I was so I was skeptical, and and for for fear of mm-hmm. sounding like a like like a, a sales pitch, I'd, I'd got to be careful. But really, I was skeptical from all the ads and stuff that that looked mm-hmm. too good to be true. And then tried it. Exactly. Now we're using it <coughs> right here. Yeah, that's awesome. And at home, and it, and it works. Uh, once once your free year is up, you you pay thirty dollars a year. Which is. That's nothing. That's less than what we pay. Uh, in a month for phone mm-hmm. service, uh, I was paying sixty bucks a month just for the phone service, somewhere around there. So, um, 
it's, it's fantastic. I mean, even if you don't win, go get yourself one uh, right at cat5.tv slash magicjack. But in the meantime, starting next week, we're going to be giving some away. So in order to qualify for that Magic Jack Plus device, all you have to do is give us a call at our cat phone, our Magic Jack. It's 254-522-8588. That's 254-CAT5-TV. And that's going to ring here at Category 5 Technology TV. Leave us a voicemail. Tell us why you would love to win a Magic Jack Plus. Think about the, the, the fact that you're going to be able to call anywhere in Canada or the U.S. absolutely free. You're going to have a local calling number. You're going to have 911 service, free voicemail, mm -hmm. three-way calling, call forwarding. The Magic Jack app that gives you uh, re reroutes it to your smartphone or iPod or any device that uh, has the ability to install the app. So give us a call, 254 522 8588. Leave us a voicemail letting us know uh, your name, where you're from, and why you think you should win a Magic Jack Plus. Cool. Lots to cover tonight. Um, I don't think we have time for any more questions. I really want to get your questions in, folks. But Krista is like, I want to learn more advanced I things. Learn. She's like going to school You're and like stuff. She's obviously obsessed with learning. <laughs> I know. Or obsessed with being a student. Maybe that's it. Students don't have responsibilities. None at all. None. Awesome. None. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> How you been finding it? It's it's different going back, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Uh, well, I I seem like the old person there. Really? Yeah, because That's sometimes crazy. I'm with like the class of like full time students, and they're like <laughs> all sitting there, you know, like yeah. look at the <laughs> so ceiling. So you're the mature one who's actually there to learn. Up and, yeah. yeah, spitballs I know. and passing notes. I'm like, come on, you guys, guys just, come on, just listen, smarten yeah. up. Yeah. Enough. Didn't mm -hmm. your parents ever teach you to study well? Mm -hmm. Got to learn stuff. And I give them all peppermints stuff. at the end of class, though, so I think they like me. <laughs> That's how you keep them. <laughs> keep in their good books. <laughs> Get invited to all the cool parties. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Right. Hey, uh, do you remember when we start? When you first started here, we looked, re yes. we delved right into web de development, mm -hmm. and we started with a website template and mm -hmm. and built that thing from the ground up and built a website. Well, now at cat5.tv slash webdev, uh, we've added some things there. I'm going to bring it up on my screen here. Bring it up on your own if you like. Mm -hmm. And right there on the website is this really cool new thing, Robbie's Web Toolkit that I've created just for you. We've got graphic creation tools for you. We've got Hey, do it with CSS instead of images, which we're going to talk <laughs> a lot about. Make things faster, how to test your site, and some security stuff as well. Awesome. Just a little toolkit with online stuff. You don't need to install stuff that you can just use online for the most part mm -hmm. and make your website better. A question came in from Andrew Jameson a couple weeks ago, and he had a, a template that was created in Photoshop. He said, you know, how can I output this uh, with all the image slices right. and things like that? I said, well, it's best to actually use CSS now, mm -hmm. now that you can do gradients with CSS and things like mm -hmm. that. So I passed along this great tool up here under Do It With CSS Instead of Images, the CSS Gradient Generator. And Andrew said in the chat room, just following the show, well, all these things are for the background. How do I make it, for example, for uh, a div, mm -hmm. right? And so I thought, well, what a great opportunity, Andrew, to, to help you understand kind of the, the way CSS is interpreted uh, on, uh, in the browser. CSS, of course, refers to um, classes, IDs, in order to assign the values. So when we look at the fact that, yeah, it looks like it is going to assign a background, that's really the command, the CSS, CSS command. We're going to tell it where we want that background mm -hmm. to happen. So I'm going to create a folder on our demo server, 013. So demo.cat5.tv slash 013. And we're going to create a quick file in there. File1.html. Let's call this one. And I'm going to upload that into there. So if you go over to that website, let's see here, demo.cat5.tv slash 013. There it is, file1.html. So right now it's just an mm -hmm. empty HTML file. Let's grab that. 
And here's the thing, Andrew, what we're going to do, okay, one of the things that we have on here that is just a fabulous tool for you to get you started is this blank index.zip. That gives you that starter file. I don't know if you remember that one, Krista, but it's a, it's a file that is already laid out for you. It's got HTML headers and mm -hmm. everything else. Where'd the browser stick it? There it is. Here we go. And that file is all laid out, set up for you. So I'm going to paste that information into file1.html. Just gets me started, Andrew. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a file style.css. That's the style sheet that's being mm -hmm. referred to by this file. Okay. And within that file is where we're going to paste our gradient from that CSS gradient generator. And this is this is pretty cool stuff because I'm going to show you how we can move that around. So you've learned a lot about mm -hmm. IDs and CSS, CSS3 as well? Yeah. Or, yeah, excellent. So uh, so if you have anything to interject, then at this point, um, it's, it's a good idea for you to do so. Uh, that's cool that you're learning all that stuff. I know. Very good. Being cool been like Robbie. It? It's yeah, no, actually, it's I really that, like it. It's not that I'm cool. It's that... The, the technology has changed so much. Ah, so. yes. It's like I say on the on the site in the toolkit, we can use CSS now instead of images. Right. We can expedite the delivery of our websites. We can lower the amount of bandwidth that our website takes. We can make it so that it loads faster, all because we're not having to tap into little mm -hmm. images to make a rounded box. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. So, let's get back over to. Oh, I'll just click on it here. Do it with CSS instead. Gradient generator. Here we go. I'm going to use, let's see, let's grab, what color do you like? Green. Green. Okay. Of course. Let's grab a nice green gradient. There we go. And I'm going to copy that one to my clipboard. Okay. And I'm going to paste that into my style.css. Now, you see here, Andrew, that Here's what Andrew was saying. Well, this is all background, background, background. That's because we haven't assigned it to anything yet. This mm -hmm. is just the code. Okay? So what you can do here is we can say, okay, well, body. Okay, now let, let's put a... We need to have a CSS assignment here. This is telling it, okay, this is going to put this stuff on the body of the website. Okay? So now, because style.css is loaded through that file, and if all goes well... Here we are. See that? We've got this weird kind of thing going on, but it's loading. And you want to know mm -hmm. what's happening there is that our body doesn't have a height assignment. And nor does our HTML. This is stuff that you will eventually need to understand. OK, so now if I refresh that, the gradient will fill the screen because I've now told it that HTML and body is 100% of the, the page mm -hmm. height. So, Okay, so now what we can do, though, is say, well, I didn't want that to fill the whole thing. This is what Andrew's saying. I want it to fill just a little box, right? right? So let's get rid of body. We'll, we'll first get over here to our website, and we're going to create a div, and we're going to call this one a class of green BG for green background. And we're going to go, hello there within that div, and then we're going to close off the div and indent that, just for stylistic reasons. So now that we've got a class of green BG, go over to our style, change body to dot green BG, because dot represents the class. If it was a, an ID, it's going to be a like a pound symbol, a, mm -hmm. a number sign. So dot green BG has now taken that away from the body and assigned it instead to this div, which just simply says hello there. So it's just a tiny little div. We haven't specified any proportions. Uh, I'm going to get rid of height equals 100% just to, to actually be truthful in that statement. <laughs> Refresh, and now we can see this. A div by default is going to be 100% width, so that's cool, and that's exactly what's happening there. Let's actually tell it, okay, well now we want this box to be a little, a little square. All right. We're going to specify pixels, height 150 pixels, overflow hidden, so that if anything goes outside of that, it's going to just hide it. Okay, refresh. 
Now we've got this box that's got our text inside the box, and that's how that is. Okay, so Andrew, if, just to answer his question about how to assign that around, you can see that I've now put that into that div because I've got a class, and I've wrapped that class in the CSS around the stuff that I copied and pasted from that one toolbox item, which creates CSS gradients. So now, I don't have to have this gradient image mm -hmm. for, for, you know, for backgrounds that I need to repeat X, and, you know, and it's going to take up page load time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit larger. It doesn't make a huge difference if it's just one little thing, but when you have you know, 30 new images that you could have done with CSS, all of a sudden those are, each one of those is a, a file that has to be accessed mm -hmm. from the server hard drive, so it's, it's like a, a, a hard link to the file. So it has to get that file, and it slows things down, and it can be substantial. So let's go back to our toolkit and see what else we have here. There's some pretty cool stuff. A fave icon generator. Fave icons are cool for your website. If you ever go to our website, you notice that up in the top, we actually have our logo there. So what you do is you create a proportional file. You know, it could be 32 by 32 pixels. And then you upload it to this service, and it's going to actually create a, a fave icon for you really, really easily. That's a great tool. More tools for you. You can play around with these creating uh, your own QR codes for scanning uh, barcodes with your cell phone. But really what I want to look at tonight is the ability to do all this CSS stuff because CSS3 takes us into a whole new realm and, uh, and that's what's really yeah, exciting about so, the modern web. Yeah, it's really just so cool. It's, awesome. it's that we can do graphical things, things that used to have to be done in Photoshop and then mm -hmm. exported as JPEGs and pieced together in tables or divs. Now we can do it all with CSS. So now, what I want to show you is this first tool here, CSS Border Radius Generator. And the only reason I'm showing you these tools is because I want to give you a tool set. You're, you're eventually going to learn these commands and you're not going to have to use these tools. But I want to give you a starting point so that you don't have to go out on the web and try to figure it out. Here's a great set of tools to get you started so that you know where where you can get it from cat5.tv slash web dev and it just gets you started on the web design things so here what we're going to do is i'm going to set a border radius of 15 in the top left here okay and it automatically creates them around here and i can see that it's now rounded this box if i set it to 150 <laughs> well look at that it's crazy right so let's do that let's set them all the same 15 15 15 and copy that now i'm going to go back to my style sheet Pardon me, and that's actually going to go into Green BG. <laughs> Pardon me, <laughs> Green BG as well. Save that, upload, and now watch this. Now our box Ooh. has that kind of thing going ah. on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and something that used to have to be done with graphics. So now what I want to do is I want to add some padding to that box. I've just added a border of 15 pixels, so I'm going to be cutting off 15 pixels on each corner. I want to add padding 15 pixels which is going to basically pad the inside of that div so that nothing is now getting cut off. It doesn't have to be 15. It can be less than that. I want it to go kind of uniform. Seems easy. Easy peasy. Easy start. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you're going to get really difficult? Very, really complicated. Very challenging. You can even get into advanced HTML, which we're going to learn all about once, once you've cool. started your Wednesday course. I have started, actually. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Good. So we're clear. Do, do you know any other stuff that we might want to add to our div using CSS3? Oh, any other cool stuff? Yeah. There oh, are some know. amazing things that we can do without graphics now. Box shadow. Oh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Text shadow. Text. Oh, I didn't know about text shadow. Ah. This is new stuff, folks. I don't know. Not really. I mean, people are saying, no, it's been around for three years. It's just finally making its way to the browser. Absolutely. But now <laughs> it's now that uh, uh, we can forget about IE6, we can move on with our lives. Let's check out the toolkit. Text shadows. I want to see that. All I want right. to see how it actually looks. Okay, so there's my text. Okay, so we know that we've got a background that's like dark, dark green. So let's... Let's set that just mm -hmm. so that we have a bit of a preview. Text color, 
Let's make our text white. And now watch this. I'm going to drag this slider. And I'm actually moving a shadow. I'm going to try to make it a little more stark so that you can really see it. Bring up the green. Okay, now, now you can see that shadow fairly well. I can position that using these sliders. It's as easy as that. It's a very you know, GUI kind of tool. There you go. So now I've got this beautiful looking text. What do you notice about this? It's still text. It's not mm -hmm. a graphic. This way, we're able to create kind of nice visual stylings on our text, but it's not affecting our search engine op uh, optimization. Yeah, that's Our really text neat. is still text. Looks great on buttons, looks great as H1 tags, headers, and things like that. You don't want to have your full body mm -hmm. filled with shadows. That might look silly, but um, certainly your headers, things mm -hmm. like that. So now, what do we do? Again, copy the code. Go back to our style, and within green BG, I'm saying, okay, well, within that, make sure you add a semicolon if it doesn't have it. Within that box, the div, let's add a text shadow of black that I just created on that site. Here we go. But remember, my text is still black. There we go. Okay? So now we want to change our text color to white. Within that same CSS declaration here for green BG, color number FFF. And this doesn't have to be, that doesn't have to be six zeros. It can be three in CSS. There you go. So we've got a nice text shadow. That's really Finally, neat. yeah, isn't that a great feature? Something eh? else that's really cool about that too is that um, even if you do know the code off by heart, eventually, uh, mm -hmm. I know so many times I've gone back and forth just because I'm so finicky, like yeah. like two pixels, uh, sort of three drag. pixels. Uh, okay, like, yeah, yeah, you can test it right absolutely. there. It's good, you got it, copy paste, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what else is really great about using these kind of online tools is that, for example, if I do, let's go back to the border radius generator. Here's a good example, and I go 15 pixels. What do you notice? It's created compatibility. Mm -hmm. See, because I would probably just use border radius. border radius, but it has also added compatibility for Mozilla and compatibility for WebKit. So that because we're still in a transitional phase, right, mm -hmm. where a lot of browsers are still adapting into the new CSS3, this kind of tool is not just giving us the border mm -hmm. radius, but also the compatible ones for Gecko and, and uh, WebKit and Apple's Safari and things like mm -hmm. that, all in a couple of clicks. Cuts so down on your typing time. <laughs> big time, big time. So finally, the one thing that I do want to show you as well is the box shadow, because that is just a beautiful effect as well. Here's a great tool. See the box. Move around your shadow. Change how much of a, a kind of blur that there is to it. Move its positioning. Place it where you like. Okay? Let's say we're just absolutely happy about that. You'll notice that the coloring is RGB. That can be a little bit tricky if, you, if you're if you not familiar with it. So here's a real quick way that you can get your RGB colors. Bring up the GIMP. It's a free tool. You can also do it in Photoshop, but GNU Image Manipulation Program from GIMP.org. Use your color picker. Choose a color that you really, really want. Okay? And then up here you see 68, 33, 33. Those are your numbers. So I'm going to right click up there, go always on top, and just enter those numbers. 68, comma, 33, comma, 33. Hit tab, and now the color that I selected in the GIMP is actually the color that's there. If you don't believe me, I can move it out there. <laughs> there it is. Okay? So there we go. Once again, it's created WebKit, Gecko, and the CSS3. So I'm going to copy that, paste that into my style sheet. indent because we like to keep things nice and neat. Upload my changes and now refresh that. And we've taken that right outside of the old style of just a square div. And we've gotten started mm -hmm. with actually creating something that looks really quite good. So we can use that to wrap our website so that we've got a nice background that you know is centered in the screen and has nice rounded edges and a nice kind of subtle blur around it, mm -hmm. uh, like a drop shadow kind of thing. Uh, the gradients for backgrounds on menus are fantastic. Look through the tools that are at cat5.tv slash webdev and you'll see that there are many other ones that we're going to be reviewing on, uh, on future shows as well and giving you a bit of a walkthrough on how those work. So how's that sound? Cool. Uh, that was good. I liked it. Yeah. I'm excited to see uh, future, future advancements, I guess. Cool.
And I hope that uh, maybe you'll find some of that stuff, like the text shadow. Mm-hmm. Awesome stuff. Yeah, I didn't know that existed. That's great. Awesome stuff. We're going to talk about in future episodes as well, taking the, the Google Web Font API and using that mm-hmm. alongside of some of these things. Web Font API allows us to now use fonts that are not traditionally available as web-safe fonts because they're, they're loaded from the Google uh, Content Distribution Network and they're, they're done through CSS. So we're able to get really, really fancy, like hand, handwritten mm-hmm. scripts as our headers with a bit of a subtle drop shadow. Everything looks like an image. Mm-hmm. But, but it's not. It's not. It's still text. And as a graphic designer first, it's amazing and I love it. it and and it, for me as a programmer, I love it too, but for a totally different reason. I do love the graphical end of it. I love that it's search engine compatible. Right. The mm-hmm. search engines pick up this text. If it's a graphic, not so much. It looks at it as, as an image. Now you're able to mm-hmm. use your headers. You know, welcome to category5.tv is now text as mm-hmm. opposed to a great big image because I wanted it to be a nice handwritten font. Right? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you very much, uh, cap5.tv slash webdev, folks, if you want to check it out. And uh, that would be fantastic. Get your questions in this mm-hmm. week, live at category5.tv. Well, pleasure having you a, here. The time kind of flew, another right? show. Yeah. Just flew right by. Mm-hmm. Can't believe that. Always does. Uh, I'll look forward to having you here with me next week. Krista, I'll say, well, when are you going to be back? Because I'd like to put you on the spot. Because oh, wow. then you can say, oh, yeah, I'll be back. On, you know. And then I have to because, you know, the to. viewers are watching. And yeah. So we'll talk about it after it. the show and we'll, we'll <laughs> figure out a time. Absolutely. A, a day that, uh, that yes. works. So check out our calendar. It's cat5.tv slash calendar if you'd like to know when Krista's going to be back. And it's been good mm-hmm. having you here. No, good it's been you. good to be back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hope school goes well for you. And yes. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Mm-hmm. See you. <laughs> Bye-bye.